curiosity curiosity is something that has paved my path since the very beginning till today on the journey that i've been working day and night when i was in my second grade i watched this movie crash i believe everyone must have watched this movie at least once in their lifetime and there was this character dr mehra who was supposedly a scientist and watching that movie i had curiosity within me to understand what a, you know what does a scientist do how to become a scientist and what role do they play so i started researching more i started you know youtubing and googling certain terms and understood that okay scientist is someone who plays with chemicals and lives in a laboratory so that's all um, i could understand at that time working more towards it in my 8th grade 9th grade i took up physics and chemistry as my major subjects and also became one of my most favorite subjects i passed 10th but of course my scores academically were in so good i got like a 68% and that's when i received the first learning that my father gave me and that is when you fix up a goal there's not only one path to achieve that goal there are 10 different paths you need to choose your uh, relevant path so of course i didn't have an option to apply to some renowned and you know amazing university so i could get my 11 12 done or move out of the and move out of india to get done with it so i applied for nda and 10 other things looking for some place where i could become a scientist after that i started my 11 12 in a state board um, university and during that period of time there was a seminar in mumbai which i attended over there there was a person who came from the us he was a scientist astronaut candidate wearing the uniform just like i am wearing right now and gave a talk on how can you become a scientist astronaut candidate and work in space organizations like nasa or isro while i was in that seminar i felt like one of the most dumb kid present in the crowd because over there there were students who had immense amount of knowledge and you know i didn't even know what was the size of the international space station so it was kind of intimidating but then you know my dad and i were like okay let's fight it through it's not a problem so i took up the challenge he gave us an opportunity basically to write a research paper in 7 days and courier it to nasa ames research center we took up the challenge and i started writing the paper day and night in 7 days i had written 54 pages of a research work which included about space settlement a settlement which can house nearly 20000 people up in space at 400 kilometers of an altitude wherein i had mentioned how can we provide them with food how can we provide them with oxygen life support system how can we create artificial gravity and all this in just 7 days I couriered it to um, NASA Ames Space Center exactly on 10th of February, and received a response in the month of March or April that I was selected, and that was the most surprising news I could ever get because I had no expectations while submitting that research paper. For me, it was just experiencing how it felt to research, how it felt to write a research paper and submit. So that next time when I am writing something like this, I have a bit of no prior knowledge as well. but yeah uh, they loved my research work so i was called to los angeles uh, and you know present my research paper in front of buzz aldrin jim bredenstein alfred warden and the biggest people who were present in the space industry i rushed towards the you know us embassy to apply for a visa but then my visa was rejected and that was a heartbreaking you know a uh, moment for me because the very first opportunity that i got i hit it hard i got selected but because of my visa issues i was not allowed to go to the us but um, during that time sushma swaraj madam who was the external affairs minister as well she started you know helping me out with the process at that time uh, mike mongo from the us started tweeting the presidential candidate at that time kamala harris about uh, you know writing akshat mohit should get a visa because such talent should be brought to the us and looking at their efforts i felt why should i be depressed when other people are taking efforts so that i can achieve something so i started trying harder i received an appointment for a visa but then it was already the conference was over and it made no sense so we skipped it and a week later mike mongo texted me mike was like akshat you know these are just a few blockages you need to hit harder so that you break these blockages and get a better hat maybe next year when you're in this conference you would have a better hat on your head i was like okay um 
in next few weeks past, I started researching more about re-entry of space vehicles, material science, and smart memory ceramics, and all such domains. I started publishing papers. I published nearly six papers in the field of material science along with other scientists that are currently renowned in these domains. Out of those six papers, one paper was about re-entry of space vehicle, which caught I, which you know, um, allowed me to get accepted in Project Possum. So Project Possum is a research mission that is supported by NASA in the United States. Possum means polar suborbital science in upper mesosphere. So the clouds that you see right now in the sky are the stratospheric clouds. The clouds above them are mesospheric clouds, which are completely opaque and you can't see through them as well. So our research mission included to understand what is the cause of formation of such clouds at 80 kilometers of an altitude, because this also causes problem during the re-entry phase of a space vehicle. I went to the US, um, of course I got my visa this time, um, even faster, and I went to the US in Florida, Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. On the very first day, um, my project director, Jason, Dr. Jason Remuller, he came and handed me over this uniform that I'm wearing today and told me that, Akshat, this is your uniform. And at that moment, I could remember me sitting in the crowd, looking at a person who was standing there to, you know, inspiring us, wearing the same uniform, and today I had one of my own. So, and that time, I was one of the youngest astronaut trainee in India and all across Asia, and also one of the only few people who had an astronaut flight suit, astronaut candidate flight suit with an Indian flag over it. So it was a very proud, you know, moment filled with proud and enthusiasm and joy. I can't still explain how it felt. The next day, we were taken to the airstrip, and there was this extra 300L two-seater aircraft. And I was just clicking pictures, and I could just hear a voice from the back that, Akshay, you know, just jump in. So I approached towards the plane, we got into the plane, and that was basically our G-force training, the aerobatic G-force flight. I took up to six Gs on my body during that flight and negative two Gs. So that helped us understand different kinds of exercises that you know, allow us to maintain the blood pressure so that we don't go hypoxic or don't burst any capillaries in the brain and all such things. We got down, we went to the hypoxia chamber training wherein we are put inside a chamber. The pressures are you know, decreased to simulate certain altitudes. And then we try to understand what is the effect of lack of oxygen uh, you know, in brain, and what it, you know, what are the effects it causes on our body. So for me, my oxygen level dropped nearly at 85 percent. It dropped to 85 percent, and the only symptoms I had was like heavy chest and cold feet. But other people had like different symptoms. Some started laughing, some lost consciousness, some started crying. So everyone has their own symptom. After that was the real moment for a person who always wanted to go to space, who always wanted to, you know, see Earth from the outside. For such a person, spacesuit is like a dream. And in front of me was an intravehicular spacesuit, an orange spacesuit, uh, which I was not there just to see or click photographs with, but I was there to test it out. So I wore that spacesuit, it was pressurized, and then we went under the spacesuit donning doffing training. So we tried to you know, move around, we tried hand movements, because it's really difficult to even move your hand above this, wearing that intracular spacesuit once it's, you know, intravehicular spacesuit once it's pressurized. We got done with that training, and then I got back to India. Once I got back to India, I received a notification that the same conference, which took place last year, where I wasn't able to go, is being held in Washington, D.C., this year in the month of May. I again applied with the same research paper and again got selected. And this time I had a 10 years visa. So I directly flew up to Washington, presented my paper, but this time not just like some ordinary student trying to you know, hit some um, doors to get some opportunity, but as a scientist astronaut candidate trainee in presenting that research paper in this uniform. And that seemed like a small win towards the steps I was taking for reaching my goal. After the presentation, I had a talk with the Global Director of National Space Society, um, Mr. Notkins, and he proposed, why don't I open a National Space Society chapter in India itself? To which I instantly said yes, because I always believed in the never say no attitude. So we brought National Space Society, one of the world's biggest space societies across the globe in Mumbai, 
in December 2019 and inaugurated it by the hands of Dr. Ravi Margus Sahayam, the one who launched Kalpana Chawla, many other astronauts to International Space Station, satellites to space, and we got him here after 50 years. So he inaugurated it, and the very first event, we were able to impact nearly 1,000 students. And that was something I really enjoyed doing, because for me, there was really less amount of guidance and understanding on what are the you know, available opportunities and what are the steps that are supposed to be taken. But now that I knew, we had to pass it on. So we started National Space Society. I worked over it for a year as a founder and president. And after a year, my mentor, Dr. Ravi, mentioned that, Akshat, don't keep just one feather in your hat. And this is a really important lesson that I actually learned from him, that never just keep one feather in your hat, keep adding feathers. So I moved on to my next big thing. I you know, passed over the responsibility to uh, Pradnesh, and I started working as a CTO, Chief Technology Officer, in Space Innova. So that was my very first entry into the startup world. I entered as a Chief Technology Officer, and Space Innova was a Delhi-based space education startup wherein we were teaching students about ro robotics, rocketry, orbital mechanics, and coding in space, and all sorts of such things. And during that phase, we also developed a small payload. So we started a whole new department, which was building rockets, sounding rockets, so that we can send our own payloads to space in our own made rockets. Of course, it was a very long shot at that time, but we still developed a whole team of aerospace engineering graduates and you know, from globally. But at that time, I was in my second or third grade doing mechanical engineering. <laughs> so I had to get, get more exposure. I went to Dubai in a conference called uh, IAC. But there, uh, no, after attending, I realized that there's a huge gap in the market, that everyone is focusing on building rockets, everyone is focusing on building satellites, but no one is focusing on human spaceflight. Right now, the whole you know, private space sector is concentrated with rockets and satellites. So as soon as I came back, we decided to build Asia's first private astronaut training facility. And that's how Astrobon Space and Defense Technologies took birth. So Astrobon Space and Defense Technology was supposed to be a space tourism solutions company. But after two to three months of you know, validating the idea, we decided to move on with a full-fledged space tourism company. So what Astrobon does right now is we are constructing Asia's first private astronaut training facility in Navi, Mumbai which will not only train commercial astronauts, but private astronaut, uh, government astronauts, private astronauts, military astronauts, and even space enthusiasts like me. So students that are present here right now can apply to Astrobon and train as an astronaut trains himself. Other than astronaut training facility, we also are developing a crew module that can go to a 400 kilometers in, of an altitude, taking seven commercial astronauts for a one orbit mission around Earth. So that is how we are fulfilling the space tourism um, program that we have planned out. And there's a third and final segment in Astrobon, that is the defense segment. So we are catering to the soldiers that are currently present in high altitudes, such as Siachen. So they basically face four major problems. They don't have uh, enough oxygen, lack of heat, lack of electricity, and water. How they are solving these problems right now? Because I believe that every problem that exists today, it has a solution. We just need to make it a bit more better. So right now, they are utilizing generators, kerosene-based um, devices to base and you know oxygen tanks. What we did is we devised a mechanism via which only a backpack-sized device can provide you with oxygen, heat, electricity, water, without using kerosene or any fossil fuel, which means we won't be emitting any form of carbon at all. So this is something that we are currently you know, uh, presenting to the Minister of Defense. And recently, I was also you know, able to speak at a G20-supported stage, uh, wherein I spoke about the private sector's role in making human spaceflight a real possibility. And I truly believe on the remarks that I made there, that private sector work is not only going to be supportive, but it is going to be a transformative journey for human spaceflight industry. Because it is about turning dreams into realities. It is about making human spaceflight really accessible to all, maintaining the moral responsibilities towards everyone on Earth. Thank you so much, everyone.